In this box, I've got a three axis digital readout for my Precision Matthews PM728 VT. I think it's time to get this baby installed. <laughs> Gavin Gu here from makingwithmetal.com and ultimatereloader.com. Recently, here on the channel, you saw an in-depth overview of the new Precision Matthews PM728VT. This is an ultra-precision, all-Taiwanese mill drill that is a great all-rounder in that sort of mid-size bracket. But what I don't have yet is a digital readout, and that is a critical piece of gear. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the three-axis digital readout kit for the PM728VT. I'm going to start by getting this equipment out of the box. We'll go over what's included. I'll give you an overview of the process of installing it, and then we'll do a quick demo. So let me get this box open. All right, I got everything out of the boxes, everything completely laid out, total OCD style. I actually kind of enjoy doing that. Uh, first surprise was the display has a metal housing. This thing is heavy, it's massive, it is very high quality. Uh, everything was packed really nicely in individual boxes, individual bags, and to give you a high level of what we've got here, I haven't looked through the bill of materials in the owner's manual, that'll be next as I prepare for the install, but we've got the display, we've got some of the hardware that comes with the display, we've got a nice bracket. This bracket is what appears to be cast aluminum with a cast aluminum mounting bracket and pivot point. The associated hardware there. The EL400, which is this scale system, uh, owner's manual, the Precision Matthews manual and materials that come there. And then we've got three different scales here. Each scale has a little hardware bag. The actual scale itself, a cover, for chips and you know coolant and lubricant that kind of stuff and then it's also got a pickup with the cable so the pickup reads the scale and then the cable and plugs into the display pretty familiar stuff if you're familiar with DROs we've got some more mounting brackets some more hardware the scale mounting brackets and so on and so forth so that's what's included with the kit from Precision Matthews. Next, I'm gonna get this installed on the mill and then I'll walk you through the process start to finish. Before I walk through the end-to-end -end installation process, here is a preview of the entire DRO system installed on the PM728VT. I just finished it. It was very straightforward. I've done multiple DRO installs. This was by far the easiest. And if we move the X, the Y, and the Z, we're gonna see our movements there on the screen. And if you were paying attention in the unboxing video, the screen was a little bit different. Precision Matthews sent me an updated display that's a slightly different color with a different logo. And if you do order one of these DRO systems, this is exactly what you're gonna get. So here's the game plan. We're gonna walk through each of the scale installs, X, then Y, then Z. Then we'll talk about the routing of all the cables and the installation of the display. Then we'll take a look at the functionality and get things tweaked just how we want them. So you saw in the unboxing portion of this video that I had sort of everything laid out on a table, component category by component category. There's three heads that reads the scales. Those are all the same. And then there's three scale assemblies, the scales, the brackets, and then these covers that we're gonna install last. The long scale is for the x-axis, the short scale is for the y-axis, and the medium length scale is for the z-axis. So in terms of installing the x-axis scale hardware, I started by removing the chip shield, and in the place of the bracket that holds the chip shield to the back of the table, there is a bracket. You mount the scale on the back of the table, the bracket holds the reader head, and then that x-axis uh, bracket actually serves as the attachment point for the bracket that extends below the table for the y-axis reader head. And when you're finished with this install, the reader head is going to install to the bracket and then the bracket that clamps this chip shield to the back of the of the table is instead clamping it to the back of the bracket that holds that x-axis 
reader head. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pay attention to the direction of the reader head. There are little hash marks on the scales that have to be aligned with the top of the reader head. It's all covered in detail in those instructions. And then you make sure that your cable is rooted cleanly out the side. Then it's on to the Y axis. For both the X axis and for the Y axis, the scales themselves are mounted directly to the castings. The table casting in the case of the X axis and the base casting in the case of the Y axis. The reader head for the Y axis is mounted to the bracket extension that comes off of the X axis bracket. The cable is rooted to the back and in the case of the Y axis and the Z axis, I was very careful to run the machine through its entire movement range along those axes to make sure that I had the scale centered appropriately. You don't want to drill into the machine and drill in the wrong spot. The machine did come with scale mounting hardware that was metric. I did replace that with 824 screws that I had on hand cap screws. So I was pre-drilling with the appropriate drill bit. In some cases I hand tapped with the 824 tap. In other cases I power tapped, especially in cases like along part of the Y-axis installation here where I couldn't get sufficient clearance to run the tap handle by hand. I like to run the tap handle into castings by hand when I can because if something is going to bind you're going to know what's what's coming before you possibly snap a tap. Anytime you use a tap with a drill, you are risking snapping off that tap. It becomes a finesse thing. If you have enough experience, you can tell when things are bound up. So just be careful if you proceed to power tap with a drill driver like I had to do in some cases here. The Z axis was a little bit different. The Z axis scale mounts directly to the column casting on the bottom, but there is an offset bracket on the top. I love this. I love this because I've performed from scratch DRO installs with no instructions and no pre-engineering on the machine or the DRO side for that particular application. And it takes a lot of work, machining custom standoffs, custom brackets, and so on and so forth. Yes, there's universal hardware, but I've always had to make custom hardware for DRO scales. Not in this case because the kit has been pre-engineered for you. Now I will note that all of these brackets have a bit of an adjustment range to them. They're slotted. So if you center up your hole where you think it's going to be perfect, you still have a little bit of left or right or up or down respectively. The scale mounting bracket mounted directly into the moving portion of the head here. And that is right in the proximity of the waist. So I was very careful when I pre-drilled those tapped holes. I used tape on the drill bit as it's sort of a depth stop. I didn't have the right depth stop for that particular drill bit. And then uh, was very careful, obviously, with the tapping as well. I did not break any taps. I did not break any drill bits. And that is always a good thing. It's a matter of experience and finesse. Always be extra careful. I like to measure about five times and then drill and tap once, as opposed to woodworking where you can just measure twice and cut once. So the Z axis actually went really slick as well. After all of the scales and reader heads are installed, you can slip these scale covers in place that are gonna keep chips from getting down between the reader head and the scale and tighten those down. There's little tapped holes right on the side of the scale itself, the included screws and the covers just screw right down. And once you get all of that installed, it's time to root your cords. And I always like to drill an extra hole in my machine where I need to and custom fabricate a little bit of a hook so that I can run all the cables. I can have the right amount of slack going to the display and to each of the reader heads, making sure that as they move, they have enough movement to pull and push the cord in and out of place and aren't going to bind or run out of length, anything like that. When I'm happy with how I have my cords rooted, I zip tie the cords to the hook and then I know things aren't gonna move around and that's a really good feeling. Then on to installing the display. The first thing you need to decide when mounting your display, obviously, is where are you gonna mount it? And this machine imposes some specific challenges. Over here on the right-hand side of the machine, you've got the Z-axis 
crank wheel and that limits putting it there because your hand is going to be in a circular motion around that space and there's not really any casting real estate on that side to screw into. On this left hand side of the machine on the column you've got one of the one shot oil lines that goes up to uh, oil the ways for, for the z-axis movement and that goes up and down and it flexes and the manifold swings right by this entire space right here on the left hand side of the machine. So I chose to mount it a little bit lower above the one shot lube handle and below the movement where this Z axis one shot lube line is run. I measured five times and then drilled my two holes and mounted the bracket to the machine. The bracket then has an arm that screws in and there's some nylon washers and metal washers that sandwich it all together so that you have nice smooth movement but so that things will stay in place when they're locked. And I could actually tighten that down even a little bit more. I just got things mounted so I didn't want to get too carried away. Then there's a stud that goes into the bottom of the display and a lock nut that locks the stud to the display. More metal and nylon washers for the end of the arm here and then a nylock nut. I like the fact that they use nylock on the inboard and outboard ends because that means they're not going to shift around as you're pivoting your display and as you're moving it in and out. Following that there is the installation of the scale cords. They have sort of serial connector RS-232 looking connectors that go in back for X Y and Z. I took a moment to label these with a label maker so that, you know, if I take them off for any reason, they're pre labeled and uh, that you have to be very careful again. I like to use a screwdriver to screw the, uh, the screw points into the connector block, but you don't want to overdo that just so that the connector comes in and seats barely any torque on those screws is needed to keep that in place. So now that we've got all of the DRO components installed, we can get this baby dialed in. Let's do that next. All right, so I've got my vise installed back on the table. I've trammed it so it's perfectly perpendicular and I have a reference block here installed in the vise that's gonna demonstrate which are the appropriate directions for tool movement so that we can check to make sure all of our scales are corresponding to the correct axis and are pointed in the proper direction for positive and negative readings on the display. So what we want to see is we want to see the tool move to the right when we crank the table so that the tool moves to the right and we have positive movement indicated on the x-axis display and negative going in the negative direction. Okay. So X is correct. Now for Y, if we move the table so that the tool moves in the positive Y direction, we're gonna check, yes, we have positive movement there. And if we go back past the origin, it should show negative, correct, that's good. Okay, so the last thing we need to check is if we raise the head, the tool moves away from the table, we should see positive Z movement here. And if we zero the Z and we go back down, we're going to see negative tool movement. That's awesome. We very easily zero out each of the axes. And if we want to assign a particular value, we could do X1, we could do Y2 inches, and we could do Z3. Hit enter. It assigns those values. And then if we have incremental movement, we're going to see those values change accordingly very easy to use DRO. Okay, it wouldn't be a milling machine video if we didn't make some chips, so let's do that now. I've got this drill bit installed. It's aligned approximately with the left edge of the part. If this was a real scenario, we would use something like an edge finder to precisely locate that left edge, and having a DRO will help you with that as well. Let's say we want to come in a quarter inch, drill a hole, and then go over another inch and drill another hole. This is a very common kind of scenario if you're making a mounting bracket or tapping a couple holes on something that you want to mount something and you know that distance and spacing for the holes. Okay, so let's zero everything out. We're gonna go ahead and start the spindle. I'm gonna come over a quarter inch. 
Let's go back just a little bit. Okay, there's 250. Go ahead and make our first hole. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and zero that, and then we'll go till we hit an inch. Multiple ways to do that. Slow down. Each two tenths there, if we want, we can lock the table down. We're within two tenths, that's definitely good. And we'll make our second hole. It is just that simple. And what is really, really rewarding is when you precisely take your measurements or if you have a template guide, you know the dimensions, you drill your holes, and then you drop that other part on and things line up perfectly. No better feeling out there. Well, I am super happy to have a three axis DRO up and running on my PM728 VT. This is a very nice, compact, ultra precise machine that runs super smooth. I love the variable speed dial and it's gonna be great to have as a complement to my larger machine. I'm thinking to have this set up for precision drilling at all times. I can have other tooling set up on the PM949 TV. What do you guys think? What do you think of that plan? Are you running one of these milling machines with a three axis DRO on it? Let me know what you think about my plans. Let me know what you're running. I'd love to discuss. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Helps support the channel. Helps me know what content you like. Also, don't forget to subscribe with notifications because I've got a lot more metalworking content and related gunsmithing content coming up on the channel as well. Links in the video description. First link will be to the PM728VT product page. The DRO is there listed as an add-on. Second link will be to the full article on makingwithmetal.com. That's got more specifications and information, links to more product pages, and so on and so forth. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, happy metalworking.